So we're going to talk about exponents right now. I'm going to read this definition. A power, which is the same thing as an exponent, is a product of repeated factors, so repeated multiplication. The base of a power is the repeated factor, so the number that's being multiplied multiple times, and then the exponent of the power indicates the number of times that the base is used as a factor. So how many of those numbers are being multiplied here? So in this example, one half is the base, okay? And five is the exponent. So this one half means this is the number that we're repeatedly multiplying. So we're multiplying the one half over and over again, as you can see it. And then this five right here tells us how many of these one halves there are. So since it's five, we're gonna, we expect one, two, three, four, five one halves. All right, so this example, the instructions say, write each product using exponents. So here we see that we have three different negative sevens being multiplied. So I, so I know that since negative seven is the number that's being repeatedly multiplied, that my base is negative seven, so I'm gonna write it as negative seven in parentheses. Because it's being multiplied three times, we're going to put three as our exponent. So this is our final answer, negative seven to the third power. Down here, we have pi times pi times r times r times r. So in this case, we have two different bases. We have two numbers that are being multiplied together. So pi and then r. So we have pi and there's two of them. So this is gonna be rewritten as pi as our base and then squared or to the second power because once again, there's two pi's being multiplied. And then here I have three r's being multiplied. So I can write that as r cubed. And I can just put these together because in math, the assumed operation of two things are next to each other is just multiplication. So this is our final answer. All right, the instructions here say evaluate each expression. So in part A, I have the quantity, negative two, and the reason I'm saying the quantity is because that's that implies that something's in parentheses. So the quantity, negative two to the fourth power. Then here I just have negative two to the fourth power. So you might think that these are the exact same things, but they're actually not, and it's because of where the parentheses are. So whenever something says to evaluate it, we just want to simplify it, get it to its simplest um, form. So in this case, I have negative two, this entire number, negative two, being taken to the fourth power. So I can rewrite this as negative two times negative two times negative two times negative two. So Whenever I have a lot of operations to do, I like to uh, use what I call the caret method. I just draw a little, little upside down caret or arrow um, to indicate which operation that I've done. So I'm gonna draw a caret down here, do negative two times negative two, which is positive four. And then same thing over here. I can do negative two times negative two, which once again is positive four. So now I have four times four, which is gonna give me 16. So this is our evaluated answer for this expression. So negative two, the quantity negative two to the fourth power equals positive 16. Now down here, I have negative two to the fourth power. But if you remember, um, in our order of operations, we like to evaluate exponents before multiplication. And you might be wondering, where's the multiplication right here? Well, the negative sign next to something really just means that we're taking the opposite of that. And the way that we write uh, taking the opposite of that is you just multiply that number by negative one. So in this case, this is really just two to the fourth power and then this whole thing times negative one. That's what that negative sign uh, is acting as. So what I wanna do is I wanna evaluate two to the fourth power first and then apply this negative sign. So I'm move this down here. So negative two to the fourth power is really negative and then if we break down two to the fourth power, that's gonna be two times two, times two, times two. So now I can do the same caret method again, or you can just remember that two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. Either way, so we get negative 16, and now I can finally apply this negative sign. So the answer here is just gonna be negative 16. So the difference in these two questions is where the parentheses are. All right, now the instructions say to evaluate each expression. And it looks like we have multiple different operations here when we're evaluating. So what we're gonna wanna use is the order of operations. And the acronym that a lot of people use is PEMDAS, but if you've seen 
roots and radicals. I prefer doing PERMDAS. So I'm going to write that down. And what these stand for, the P stands for parentheses or any other um, brackets or grouping symbols. And then the next step, we want to evaluate all exponents and radicals or roots. And then we want to do multiplication and division from left to right. And then we can evaluate any addition and subtraction. So for the first one here, we see we have 3 plus 2 times 3 to the fourth power. Well, we don't see any parentheses, but I do see an exponent. So I want to evaluate that first. So I have 3 to the fourth power. Now, if you know that off the top of your head, it is 81. But you could also just do 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3, which is 27, times 3, which is 81. Um, and you could obviously do this all out. Uh, but anyway, we get 81 here. And then what I do is bring everything else down. Unless you can uh, do a different operation in the same step. Here we can't. So now I have 81 times 2 and this plus 3. And the reason I'm doing 81 times 2 first is because we would now do multiplication because there's no more parentheses and no more exponents or roots. So now I'll multiply 2 times 81, which is 162. Once again, you could have done that out if you didn't know that. And then I bring down the this uh, plus and the 3. And then I can finally do my addition. 3 plus 162 is equal to 165. And that is our final evaluated expression answer here. For part B, um, I have 3 cubed minus 8 squared divided by 2. So what I'm going to do first is evaluate my exponents. So 3 cubed is 27 minus 8 squared is 64. And I bring down this divided by 2. Okay. So now after exponents, I'm going to do multiplication or division from left to right. I see I have division here. So what I'm going to do is divide this 64 by 2. And I actually like to always think of things as terms. So I'm going to include this negative 64 divided by 2 to get negative 32. Either way, it will work. So I'll bring down the negative 32. I'll just bring down this term, the 27. And now I have 27 minus 32, which is just equal to negative 5. So that is the answer for part B. All right, for part C, I have negative 3 times the quantity, once again, which means that that means something is in parentheses, the quantity negative 10 squared plus 70. So what I want to do here is I see that I do have parentheses, so I'm going to go into my parentheses here, and then I'm going to do the order of operations again. Okay, so do I have any more parentheses inside these parentheses? No. Do I have any exponents? Yes, I have negative 10 squared, which this really means the opposite of positive 10 squared. So I do 10 squared, which is 100, and then I apply the negative sign. So I get negative 100 plus 70. Just bring that down. And I need to keep the parentheses because I'm not finished evaluating everything in the parentheses. Okay. So now I look again. I do negative 100 plus 70, which is going to be negative 30. So I bring that down. I get negative 3. So now everything's evaluated in these parentheses, so you don't technically need them. But whenever you're multiplying or doing an operation to a negative number, it's a good idea to have the, neg uh, the parentheses. So now I can do negative 3 times negative 30, which is going to give me, well, I have a negative times a negative, so it's going to be a positive number. And I have 3 times 30, which is going to be 90, so this becomes positive 90. And that is our answer for part C. All right, so for this example, we have a word problem. And... It reads, the annual profit, P, in thousands of dollars, earned by a technology company X years after opening, is represented by the equation P equals 0.1 X to the third power plus 3. How, many, how much more profit is earned in year 5 than in year 4? So I'm going to highlight some important things from this problem. So we're given that P is the annual profit in thousands of dollars. okay, And then we're also given that X is the amount of years after the uh, opening, after the company opens. So it's X years. So P is annual profit. X is the number of years. And remember, annual means yearly, so every year. And then we're given this equation, P equals 0.1X cubed plus 3. So that's going to be helpful. And then the question that they're asking us is how much more profit is earned in year 5 than year 4? 
Well, we know the number of years is x, so that's when x is 5 and when x is 4, and we want to find the difference of this, how much more year 5's profit is than year 4. And if you didn't know what profit is, profit is the amount of money a company makes after it does its revenue minus its cost, but you don't need to know that for this problem. So what we want to do is find out how much profit the company made in year 5 and then subtract the amount of profit the company made in year 4 from that year 5 number, and then we get our answer. So first thing I'm going to do is copy down my equation. So it's P equals 0.1x cubed plus 3. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 5, and then for the next one I'm going to plug in 4. But it doesn't matter. You could plug in 4 first and then 5. We just need to figure out the profit for each of these years. So once again, since x is the number of years, we're going to plug in 5 for x. So my profit for year 5 is equal to 0 0.1 times 5 cubed plus 3. So now I'm going to simplify this. So I, I'm going to do my order of operations again. So 5 to the third power, I do exponents first. 5 to the third power is 125. So I can rewrite this as p equals 0 0.1 times 125 plus 3. So here I have 0 0.1 times 125. Okay, If you remember, multiplying by 0 0.1, you really just move the decimal one space to the left. So I get p equals 12.5 plus 3. Now the last step is just adding 12.5 plus 3. And that is going to give me p equals 15.5. But if we look at the original question, the annual profit is in thousands of dollars. So this is profit equals 15.5 thousand. So to get that into actual dollars, I just have to multiply this number times 1,000, aka move the decimal place over one, two, three times. So P for year five is going to equal 15,500 dollars, because once again, if I move the decimal three times and fill these in with zeros, that's what I get here. So this is for year five. So now what I want to do is calculate the amount of profit in year four. So I'm going to scroll back up. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here, but instead of plugging in for 5 for the number of years, I'm going to plug in 4. So I'm going to do P equals 0 0.1 times 4, this time, cubed plus 3. So now I'm going to cube 4, which is 64. Once again, you could do that out. So I get 64 times 0 0.1 and then plus 3. And then once again, I'm going to move the decimal over one space to the left because I'm multiplying by 0 0.1. So I get P equals 6.4 plus 3. And then I do 6.4 plus 3, which is 9.4. Once again, this is how many thousands of dollars that they made in profit. So 9.4, all I have to do is move this decimal over three spaces to the left to get that P for year four is equal to $9,400. Once again, I fill these in with zeros whenever I'm moving the decimal. So this is year four. So now what I have to do is just subtract year five minus year four. So I can do 15,000, sorry, 15,500, excuse me, minus 9,400. And the zeros just come down. And then 5 minus 4 is 1. And then 15 minus 9 is 6. So I get $6,100 is how much more money I made in year 5 than year 4. But whenever there's a word problem, we like to answer it with a word answer. So the company profited 6000 100 more in year five than in year four. And that is our word answer to our word problem.